So what's so special about a milkweed? Beside the fact that we know that monarchs, that's their larva host and we have to plant them to save the monarchs. Actually, that's true, but Asclepius, the milkweeds, uh, have really cool flower morphology that's really important to know if when you're looking at those at those flowers and those structures to really understand what you're looking at. So in this video, this introduction to the Sclepius, the milkweeds, uh, we're gonna break down what that looks like, what the pieces are, and hopefully then you can look at those flowers with a lot more respect. Okay, so first off, what we have is on the on the flowers we have these little sepals. Usually the sepals are hidden unless it's closed. Before it opens, you can see the petals are closed up and then the little sepals are underneath, as you can see here in this picture. Those are the sepals. And then the petals. And sometimes the petals are hairy. Sometimes they're glabrous or not hairy. Um, so those are different things that you, you're kind of looking at when you're identifying this species. Uh, when you see the, the flowers, like look at these flowers. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but they, they all have the similar structure in that the petals actually are draped down. It's like the dress that drapes down. It hides the sepals. And that's why I wanted to show you the sepals here uh, with the closed, with the, the closed flowers so you can see them before they opened up. So, so you have the, the, the um, corolla, the collective petals, the collective flower, and then you have a corona, corona coming out, corona. That's not a word that, that we like using anymore, but a corona. So think of a daffodil. You got that big tube thing coming out. That's called that's a corona. Okay. Uh, so you have this corona, and this corona has this column, and and then it has these hoods. These hoods, and the hoods are where the nectar is. The nectar is. So sometimes you see a little insect sitting on top of the flower, just sticking its tongue down in that hood, stealing some nectar. Right. It's not going in, but it's 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 stealing some. Uh, so you have these hoods. Sometimes. Uh, more often times than not, you're going to have these horns. These horns. Sometimes the horns surpass the hood. Sometimes they're down within the hood. Sometimes they're they're more hidden. Sometimes they're absent. Um, but you can have these horns. We'll talk about those horns here in a second. So then, in the middle of the structure, uh, what you, when you look down, you see the horns, and you can see that here in this picture, that that cap, that that top structure is the gynece. Um, Gynestigium. So the gynestigium is covers the gynecium, and the gynecium is the female reproductive parts. And this is cool because it's got these the, these female reproductive parts. Uh, the the stigmatic structure is this center structure, right? The center structure. And then on the side, on you have you have these these anthers, and these anthers have split, have split. So uh, so they have uh, so on most plants you see little pollen grains. Well, this has what's called a pollinia. A pollinia is a collection of, of pollen. So hundreds of pollen uh, create this pollinia, and you see this with orchids as well uh, due to coevolution, not because they're related to each other. Um, and so the pollinia uh, is going, and we'll we'll actually ju jump into that here in a second. So let's stick with the the uh, the uh, stigmatic structure. It's going to have these stigmatic slits. And these slits are like these two flaps like this that, that if you're a bee, your leg slips down into. And when it slips down into that, it takes a little work to get out. And so when you're pulling it out, you have the curriculum, which is this, this piece that holds the, holds the two, the two uh, pollinia. And you can see here on the Sclepius, the Sclepius exaltata pollinia, how it looks. What happens when that bee, when the bee's foot flies down there, uh, gets caught on its uh, curricula, and when it pulls it out, that, that uh, pollinia attaches, okay? And then that pollinia, again, reshapes a little bit, so then when that bee goes into another flower, it, it slides down into that stigmatic slip, that stigmatic slip there, which you can kind of see, hopefully in this picture, the stigmatic slip, uh, and then it deposits the, the, um, it deposits the, the pollinia. And so many of our species need to, many of, of the Asclepius need to be cross-pollinated too. So, so they won't self-pollinate. So if they get pollen from pollinia from their own, uh, their, their own plant, they're like, no, we're not, we're not gonna deal with this. Um, so basically, basically that's the structure. So you have, again, you have these, these, uh, these drooping petals. You have this, this, um, this column, this column in the middle, and then you have the hoods. Oftentimes you have horns, and then you have the the cap or the the um, 
gynestegium on the top. You have that cap on the top. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty awesome. It's evolutionarily really cool flowers. Uh, so in that, I hope that then when you watch the other videos on the Asclepia species, uh, you can reference this video and it'll help you out so then it, you kind of know what we're talking about. And that's it. So the milkweed flowers, uh, Asclepius flowers are awesome. It's a great genus uh, within the Apicinaceae, the dog bane family. Um, it's in uh, its own tribe, the Asclepidae tribe, um, and then uh, in its own subfamily, Asclepidae, 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 As